Hello and welcome back to the studio. Last week I began a um, mixed media piece of work, the blackbird and the strawberry plant, incorporating painting and collage, drawing and image transfer. Now image transfer is a technique that requires quite a lot of practice, um, can be quite tricky. And I know a few people have problems with it, so I just thought this week I would talk a little bit more about that and show you um, some, some things that I hope will help. Let's have a quick tour through the things you'll need. Photocopies or magazine photographs. Photocopy of a real leaf. Magazine photograph, photocopy of some drawing. Here I've um, I've drawn on the photocopy and I've experimented a little bit with that on the blackbird. Here it turned out really well. I'll show you that properly later on. And of course, just to remind you that uh, if it's important which way around your work is, you need to flip your image. And here's a piece of work I did a while ago when I was, I made a few pieces of work um, responding to writing on the road. This was on the rail at the edge of the railway station platform. So I flipped the photocopy so the word was readable. What we talk about, we talk about the substrate, which is the surface that you collage onto or do your transfer onto. And I am finding that it's much easier to do image transfer onto quite a firm surface because it stands up to the, um, the amount of wetting and rubbing that you have to do to remove the paper. Glues. I put glue in the inverted commas because it doesn't have to be actually glue. You can use acrylic mediums. Um, I've got some acrylic extender, some clear gesso, some absorbent ground, some glazing medium. Um, but this is my my glue of preference. Is, the, is a Mod Podge. It doesn't seem to make any difference whether you get the matte Mod Podge or the glossy Mod Podge. And I have also used, I, I bought a little bottle of cheap glue, which is um, craft glue, but it's acrylic glue, so I assumed it would be waterproof when it was dry. And it does seem to work quite well, that one. Got a few examples here when I was um, when I was testing different methods, and I've made a note of all the different mediums I've used to stick the images to the paper. I just used ordinary paper to test it with this time, with very mixed results, as you can see. So this was using a magazine photograph over at the top the clear gesso, and I tested it with. A cheap thin magazine and more expensive thick magazine paper. Thin cheap magazine paper works better, it's much easier to remove the paper and leave the image behind, visible. I did test the slow drying medium, Winsor & Newton's acrylic slow drying medium, thinking probably it wouldn't make a very good glue, and it didn't. It was. It took too long to dry because it's a slow drying medium and the image was not fixed at all to the surface of the paper. But sometimes it's interesting just to test different things and even if you think they're not going to work. Do test them and keep a record of your tests. Here there was quite a satisfactory result using the Winsor & Newton extender. That's this one. That's quite easy, to, quite easy to buy as well. It's, it's stuff that you normally add to your paint to make your paint go further. 
it makes quite a good glue for image transfer as you can see there the thin cheap paper once it was dried onto the extender I was able to remove the back of the paper left the image behind not such a good result for the thicker more expensive paper expensive magazines don't work so well um, on this sheet I've used inkjet prints so the home photocopies and the top one was that that little bottle of Dovecraft acrylic glue and that's worked quite well the next one down was on washable PVA that's the stuff that I said wasn't ideal to use um, and it's not a bad result but I do know that when you when you wet it and try and remove the paper it, it all seems to go really slimy quite easily, so I wouldn't recommend you use that. And then finally, uh, the top one was an inkjet print used on matte mod podge. It's quite nice and clear. Next one down is an, another inkjet print on a, the acrylic extender or glazing medium. That's uh, this one. So those two I find quite successful. And then the bottom one was the inkjet print on the golden white gesso absorbent ground. And that's worked really badly. It's left a very fuzzy, not very clear image behind. So that, was, that wasn't a very good one. I either use a brush or a glue spreader for applying the the um, medium or the glue with and water for removing the paper off the back because what the, the technique does is it sticks the ink from the photocopy or from the magazine photograph it sticks the ink down onto the substrate and then you use water to remove the paper off the back and you can see on my last week's work, there we go, the, the, the blackbird is showing up quite nice and clearly. There is a little bit of paper still showing there, but that's okay, I don't really mind that. Um, but here are the two more pieces that I started to do as image transfers, and I left them with the paper partly removed so that you could see what can sometimes be the problem, that um, when it's wet, you think you're seeing a really nice successful image transfer and you've rubbed all your paper off you think and you go away congratulating yourself on a successful session you come back and it's gone white again like that and you feel a little bit disappointed you can what I've done with the blackbird was I've kept re-wetting it and keeping on very carefully rubbing the paper off and of course the danger is you can rub too much paper off and you, you end up with no image transferred at all. It's all gone. Um, can end up looking a little bit patchy or can disappear completely. So I'm still rubbing away the surface of that one. There's a danger it's going to completely disappear. But what I ended up doing with the blackbird was... Um, I diluted a very small amount of glaze medium with a little tiny bit of colour in it. In fact, there's a little bit of blue in it. And I brushed that over very carefully. So in effect, it makes it look like a wet surface and it disguises any bits of paper that are still left sticking to it. Let's see if we can finish off this removal of the paper off this photocopy of a drawing that I've stuck down in the top corner. I'll bring it a little bit closer and you can see. Can you see the little bits that are all falling off? 
that's why the substrate, why this um, MDF makes such a good substrate, is because you can keep on wetting it and you're not saturated. If you're doing a, an image transfer onto paper, of course, you'll end up with your paper underneath getting saturated as well and it can all go a little bit fragile. It's looking quite good. What I'll do is I'll, um, I'll let that dry and I'll see if there's still any more white showing and then I'll give it a glaze using the glaze medium then you can see how that helps to make it look better. Well, it's dried again, and as I thought, you can still see the paper on the surface. So I've put a, a little bit of um, glazing medium and some yellow paint here. I've used a colour that I know is quite translucent because I don't want to cover up my image transfer. I just want to sort of, it's like giving it um, a varnish layer. But I'm also adding a little bit of water to it so that it's not too thick and glossy. Just blending a little bit of colour into the glaze medium with some water as well. So I get a nice thin layer. Let's try just brushing that over. Of course, as soon as I've done this, it means that I won't be able to remove any more paper. And that's the reason, if you remember, why you don't get any, you try not to get any glue or medium on top of the paper you're sticking down to do the image transfer with. There we go. Let's do this corner up here as well, see what that looks like. can still see the edge of the paper. I'm just going to do that top part, see if it makes it possible to see the drawing any more clearly. So what I might do is, is, is re-wet this area and carry on trying to peel the paper off. But this top corner, that's sealed now. I can only stick something on top of that. I can't take any more paper off it. And finally, to recap the technique and also to show you um, something I've been experimenting with in addition to the photocopy, where I've, um, I you can see here where I've, I've drawn with ink onto the paper, onto the photocopy, and also I tried uh, using a watercolour pencil just to add bit of colour to the photocopy just to see how that worked out. It seemed to be really quite effective and I did it here. So I'm going to do this on a um, on that spare piece of board which has been primed ready just with acrylic paint. Last week I used a glue spreader to put the glue on with. Um, can also use an old brush. I'm using um, the acrylic extender this time. So I obviously found in the past that it makes a successful transfer medium. large areas like this it's actually quicker to apply the glue or medium with a brush. 
but you do have to make sure there's plenty on both plenty on and that it's uh, nice and evenly spread hard to see isn't it white on white Let's plop that on there. Squeezing the glue out from the centre. Try not to get any wrinkles or bubbles. I, I can actually feel that's damp now because the moisture is starting to come up through the paper so we have to wait a few hours I'm going to leave this till the end of the day um, I, like I said last time ideally we'd wait overnight for it to become really really dry and so that I can finish off this video I'll just take this to the end of the day so it'll have about five or six hours drying time before I try and take the paper off the back and we'll see what we've got left behind. The other thing you can use to do your final pressing down, I used a piece of photocopy paper last week, but you can just use an old plastic file pocket or a plastic bag, that would do. Another useful tip. There you go. Leave that to dry. Come back and see what's happened. Okay, it's dry now, so I should be able to take the paper off the back of this image transfer. Um, you can see I've also been painting the background, the negative space between this leaf and the bird with blue. I want to alter the tonal balance between the leaf and the background before it was a darker leaf and a paler background. But I wanted there to be blue behind the blackbird's head so that when I paint his beak orange it's going to really show up like kind of uh, orangey yellow. It's really show up well against the blue and then I thought well if this is going to be blue then it's, it'll um, swamp the leaf and the leaf will just disappear so I'm going to, this is going to probably go even darker and the leaf will go brighter. Um, but anyway, sa yes, yeah, sandpaper. I can sandpaper the back of this new piece. But also I use sandpaper to help to take away any paper left behind. I was talking earlier about how sometimes you've got paper left behind when you think you've got rid of it all. You can actually come back with some sandpaper and just sandpaper back some areas as well. That helps create a clearer transfer. You just sometimes find some really interesting textures as well with sandpapering. You can get quite carried away with sandpaper. Anyway, I'll sandpaper this, uh, wet it, peel it off and see what we got.
Well, it's looking quite nice. So I hope that's been useful and it encourages you to practice this technique. It is a bit hit and miss, but when it works, it can lead to some really interesting effects.